we've been always uh, our group uh, was uh, is always uh, curious uh, of everything which is happening uh, potentially interesting in the field of vascular access uh, and we have been curious and uh, personally I have been curious uh, since uh, uh, since many years ago since I was born maybe and uh, more than 20 years ago I learned uh, this uh, technique uh, of intracavitary EKG from uh, a friend and anesthesiology who used to work uh, in Heidelberg. And uh, I, after my visit to Heidelberg, uh, I tried this technique uh, as we were trying uh, any kind of devices, a new technology, methodology. You know, you try everything and then uh, something survives, something goes on, something gets into the clinical practice. And uh, we start. We first uh, used uh, in the intracavitary EKG for a port insertion in 1997 and in the, f in the following years. And um, after a while, we stopped making making the postoperative uh, X-ray control because we found out that it was uh, useless. Uh, and when the peak, uh, the ultrasound guided peak, uh, came into the scene at the beginning of this century, very rapidly we have the intu intuition of using uh, intracavitary EKG for peaks. And uh, I think uh, that we were the first uh, group and the first hospital in the world to use intracavitary EKG for peaks at that time because uh, the culture of peak, ultrasound guided peak, uh, uh, was born uh, in the Anglo-Saxon world uh, in USA and uh, in UK, but uh, in these countries they had no access uh, to the intracavitary EKG. On the contrary, Italy was at the perfect uh, uh, overlap uh, between the culture of the ultrasound guided peak coming from Anglo-Saxon country and the culture of intracavitary EKG, which was uh, up to the moment uh, just a thing of the German countries. Uh, so that's why we put the two things together and very rapidly we included intracavitary EKG in our hospital policies uh, and uh, at present uh, it is uh, strongly recommended by hospital policies that uh, any kind of central line should be inserted by using intracavitary EKG with the only exception of uh, epicutano caval catheters uh, in neonates uh, where the the technique of intracavitary EKG might be difficult to achieve and the ultrasound uh, might be mm, fairly easier and better. And also the exception, another exception always in neonates, which is the umbilical venous catheters, in which, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, the intracavitary EKG is always possible, but from a logistical point of view, it might not be rewarding because it's a sort of a semi-emergency procedure in which you need the, the ultrasound anyway for the tip navigation, so it makes more sense to use just ultrasound in, in terms of cost effectiveness. But all of the other access, uh, short term, long term, peak ports, uh, thoracic ports, peak, uh, uh, any kind of uh, uh, CVC or insert uh, uh, in, a, in a jugular, subclavian, uh, brachiocephalic at any age uh, is inserted by using uh, intracavitary EKG. I think the future is to abandon radiology for the vast majority of, uh, yeah. of uh, procedure in vascular access. there is uh, less and less need of the radiologist. As a matter of fact, that you use the radiology suite for a vascular access procedure is uh, most of the time a waste of money, an incredible waste of money, because you achieve the same results, uh, but spending 10 times, uh, 12 times more. And also you use uh, a professional like the radiologist, uh, an interventional radiologist, which, which is very precious uh, for other maneuvers, uh, which uh, absolutely requires him. I think all, those, all of the emergency, the trauma patient, uh, uh, basically I, I am an emergency uh, uh, surgeon, and I tell you that uh, if compared to 20 years ago, the number of situations which uh, I have to uh, open uh, a traumatized patient have become uh, minimal because everything is, uh, is done by radiology, and that's the incredibly good role a great role of interventional radiologists. So there is no reason to have them wasting time, precious time, doing something which can be done exactly with the same result, the same clinical outcome, uh, without uh, the use of X-ray.
Well, uh, EKG and the intracavital EKG technique uh, was born uh, uh, long before the first uh, dedicated money for EKG technique was born, of course. And uh, I know about it because uh, we started to use it in 1997. And the first uh, attempt of doing the first uh, dedicated model for intercapital EKG occurred in my hospital uh, something like 10 years later. So for 10 years, we did uh, all of the intercapital EKG without even dreaming there could be a dedicated monitor. So it's very important not to confuse the technique, uh, the methodology of intercapital EKG with a device uh, which can make this technique uh, uh, more user-friendly. Mm -hmm. And coming to the dedicated monitor, apart from uh, an easier documentation, uh, a more uh, user-friendly approach, uh, uh, and uh, apart from this, it might have some special features. Example of such special features uh, is uh, to, able, to be able to recognize automatically the uh, maximal increase of the peak. There is always a, a human factor, uh, of course, but uh, if the human factor is also coupled with a machine which tells you uh, mathematically which is the, the point of highest uh, m peak, uh, it's uh, better, of course. The other aspect is uh, to be able to recognize uh, the maximal uh, height uh, of the F waves uh, in uh, atrial fibrillation patient very recently has been proven by different uh, uh, studies uh, that we can uh, use the, the F waves of the trace of the EKG of the fibrillation, uh, atrial fibrillation patient as a sort of surrogate of the height of the P. So a machine uh, who will be able to recognize this uh, height F wave will, be, will, will add something, will have something more than the standard monitor. Also, there are machines uh, which may have uh, a navigation, an EKG navigation, uh, which also something which is very desirable. Uh, basically, tip navigation today is uh, performed best uh, by um, ultrasound. Uh, there are some uh, products uh, with uh, electromagnetic device which are absolutely not reliable and not uh, useful, not cost effective. So the, the, the basic of the tip navigation now is ultrasound. Still, the fact of having also ultrasound is also human uh, as a human factor because it's operator dependent. So if we can add something which is completely inexpensive and, uh, and which not require additional uh, uh, cost additional uh, device uh, as the EKG navigation performed by the same dedicated monitor, that would be another additional interesting feature. The other problem is that uh, the, the future, of course, is to have uh, simultaneously um, the EKG uh, device and the ultrasound together. And, and the other aspect also that both should be wireless in the future. We, n we now have uh, a terrific uh, ultrasound, wireless ultrasound uh, that, that we can use the ultrasound probe uh, without a wire, which are connected by Wi-Fi with, uh, with uh, a, a smartphone or a tablet. We also have uh, some uh, EKG uh, devices, uh, which are wireless and connected by Bluetooth uh, with a tablet or with a smartphone, but we don't have the two things together. So I think in the future will be have a, a very smart, small device which is simultaneously is uh, uh, optimal for EKG and for ultrasound uh, and is connected by Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or, or whatever with uh, a tablet or with, uh, with a smartphone. That, that will be the thing we should work to in, in the future. But obviously, if a patient is already connected to a monitor, to the EKG monitor, it makes no sense to add an additional monitor, even if it's a dedicated one, which means that all patients uh, which are in the uh, intensive care units, mm -hmm. including the pediatric intensive care units, including the neonatal intensive care units, which also means all children, because we do insertion of vascular access in, uh, in the intensive, in pediatric intensive care unit for all children. Uh, in those cases, we use just the monitor. 
There are other uh, words, for instance, of neurology, of cardiology, where the patient is connected to the monitor. So if, there is a moni if the monitor is already there, we don't replace it. Mm -hmm. We have experience enough. We have 20 years and more of experience so that we can use any kind of monitor, even a, even a toy EKG device, uh, and be able to do an appropriate uh, intercavitar EKG. Uh, for the rest of the patient, uh, uh, if uh, uh, you consider the day hospital, the day hospital unit where we perform uh, every morning uh, insertions, uh, seven, eight, ten insertions every morning, then of course uh, it is convenient to have a dedicated monitor in each uh, day hospital unit. It is what we have. Okay. Uh, if we come to the bedside insertion, uh, uh, things uh, are uh, that there are two possible options or to use a, a very small, uh, compact uh, device uh, uh, dedica for a dedicated uh, EKG, uh, to dedicated to the intracavitary EKG technique, uh, or to use uh, the defibrillator, which uh, usually is present uh, in, the, in the world. Personally, I prefer to use a small, dedicated device, also because uh, when you go and insert uh, in bedside uh, peaks, for instance, uh, you need a cart of some kind. And on the cart, you need to put your uh, material, uh, your in insertion packs, and you have to put your ultrasound. So it makes sense also to carry in this uh, cart uh, also the uh, EKG device. Well, uh, the modified EKG system uh, uh, technique, uh, the modified EKG technique is something which uh, we invented. I mean, uh, we were inspired by Engelhardt, uh, but uh, our group has worked a lot in uh, defining this modified EKG technique. There is also another German group. Uh, there is a nice study by Steinhagen uh, talking about this modified EKG technique. And uh, it's the same for the standard conventional uh, EKG technique. You should not confuse the methodology with the device. Uh, the methodology is the modified EKG technique with the scientific uh, assumption and demonstration now with, uh, with the recent studies uh, that you can use the F waves, F surrogates or the P wave. And that's uh, something. And then uh, you have a device, uh, at this moment only one device, uh, the, the pilot, uh, who is able to use uh, this methodology and put it automatically and electronically in a user-friendly way. Present, the pilot is the only dedicated EKG monitor already equipped for making the modified intracavitar EKG easier and user-friendly. So this is the story. It is also possible in the future other uh, devices may come, uh, uh, may arrive in the market, uh, which will be using uh, uh, this methodology or the modified EKG technique uh, can be used. At the present, uh, the pilot is unique. The pilot becomes relevant uh, in, uh, in inverse proportion to the experience of the operator. Because, uh, of course, uh, uh, one of my nurses, I think of Sandro, for instance. Uh, Sandro has been working with EKG with me since 1997. So he has uh, 22 years of, of EKG. Uh, the first 12 years he did with any kind of monitor. So, so yes, he has the eye of the trays and, and in the, the interpretation done by Sandro of a, a trays. Uh, is incredibly swifter and, uh, and uh, rapid and um, accurate uh, because of, of this experience. But uh, if it is the first time that the nurse or the doctor uh, comes uh, to, to the EKG technique, uh, of course it helps uh, to have a, a, a device which should be particularly user-friendly. This is true for the conventional EKG technique, it's true also for the, for the modified EKG technique. Well, uh, I, think, I tell you that uh, I would exclude, for instance, uh, and I, I never recommend uh, those systems uh, which uh, have uh, additional uh, tip navigation systems which are not validated or not accurate. For instance, uh, there, there is uh, one which we already mentioned, uh, 
with the, an EKG technique for tip location, an electromagnetic system for tip navigation, which uh, I never recommend uh, because uh, it's, um, I think, uh, it's just a, you know, a commercial trick for, for a rise in the price. Another, which I will never recommend, uh, but now it's disappearing, I think, uh, it's from another company, it's an AKG technique uh, with a Doppler uh, tip navigation system, which also has no validation at all, and it's rapidly disappearing. So if we look uh, only at the intracavitary KG uh, devices, I think that uh, um, I, I don't like the idea of making a sort of a hit parade or what is best, but uh, I can tell you the top five, I can tell you the criteria. The criteria should be, first, the smaller, the better. So if you have a tablet, rather a laptop, of course the, the tablet is much better. Also because uh, you need this kind of device specifically when you go bedside inserting, inserting catheters. Second, uh, how user-friendly is uh, in terms of uh, nobology? You know nobology, meaning if you have uh, too many knobs, uh, too many cursors, uh, too many, uh, that will be discouraging uh, the, the operator. So the ideal device, you have a very few and very simple to use. Uh, uh, this might be intuitive, exactly. The other aspect, uh, it should be uh, user-friendly interpretation. You should facilitate interpretation. So if you have a double screen with uh, something that you can freeze and then something uh, that you can compare, with, uh, that would be, of course, better than if you have just one trace going on, uh, etc. Uh, one other aspect uh, uh, which regards uh, infection prevention is that everything should be keyboardless. So you should have something which is a complete touch screen. Every time you have a keyboard, you have a risk of bacterial contamination. So the tablet is, is the name of the game. Uh, the other aspect is that you should have something with some additional features, such as the possibility of doing something that you will never do with a standard monitor, which might be printing, for instance, uh, or uh, to take a snapshot which can be um, forwarded by USB key or by uh, Bluetooth uh, to another, another computer, etc. Or uh, to be able to do some software special uh, uh, routine, such as, for instance, the recognition, uh, automatic recognition of the F-Wave, or the automatic, or the automatic uh, EKG navigation, which are two software specialty. Something which will make the difference if compared the use of a standard monitor. Last but not least, I think that uh, to have a, a wireless connection between uh, the, the device itself, the device which connected to the electrodes and uh, the tablet uh, should be something very desirable.